What seems to be special about this work is its tangible nature. It's physical, the experience of being on the school ground, it's, it's sensual in the sense that it appeals to many of your senses, whether it's touch or taste or smell. A nurtured, cared for environment expresses messages of care to kids. I think it's uh, very important for children nowadays to be outdoors because they are too much indoors. That means computers and TV are taking so much time from them. And in school teaching is about books. And I think many, many children today, they live into cities, in cities, in very high densified cities without daily contact with the nature. So the school ground is a perfect place to do anything about nature. We need to get kids outdoors for their physical health. We have issues of overweight and obesity even in early childhood and certainly in elementary years and by the time a kid becomes a teenager and is obese it's really difficult to reverse that. We know that the big uh, school areas in asphalt and uh, such areas are uh, not really healthy for our kids. It's, uh, and we think uh, the kids in the cities, and not only in the cities, need more uh, contact with nature, more experience, natural experience in the areas. And it's important for the development for the kids. I thought school grounds are the most approachable and uh, important uh, spaces for children. There are many things children could learn only outside, outdoors. We have a quite long history of using school grounds and school gardens actually, uh, more than maybe 100 years. We have a vegetable garden and we have forest and trees and the children ride their trikes among our plants and bushes and interact with butterflies and bees every single day. I guess what I have come to really see is children need this. They need this deeply for their souls. A lot of what we do in the Green Schoolyard Alliance is once these gardens are built, uh, they need to be program layered on top of it. And so we help schools figure out how to use it as an as a outdoor classroom. Perhaps what we've focused on quite a lot in the UK over the last 20 years is the, the learning, the curriculum, taking the curriculum outdoors. It's not necessarily about changing the physical appearance of your school grounds, although that is an important part of what we do, um, but it's, it's very much about making the most of what you've got. This is the Great Fire of London. So the children make these buildings, uh, put them out into the grounds, and then the head teacher sets fire to them. And the impact that that has is, is incredible. And you know, they really see the power of fire. You know, what it can do and how devastating it can be. The school that I became principal of was very under-resourced. The amazing thing that happened uh, when we started to develop the school grounds for learning was that the students' development just was incredible. Their results in reading, math, science, everything else escalated and everyone was having fun. I think one of the things in Canada where we've uh, done well is starting to shift the institutions a bit, so our school districts we've been able to convince some of them to start to move along and, and, and set a structure in place so that it best supports schools doing this work. I'd like to see more American schools starting green schoolyards and starting them in ways that go beyond school gardens to look at the ecology of their place, to really tie their curriculum in in a meaningful way and to let their children take more risks. Some things can't be taught. Some things can only be learned through experience. Free play is the free interchange of kids between themselves and their environment 
and it does seem to me to be the venue or moment for learning. What, what, what's the founding thought or underlying principle um, when we're thinking about children at risk is that actually they're, they are their own risk assessors. Kids want to explore heights. They should explore heights. They should experience handling dangerous tools. And they need wandering alone away from a lot that adult supervision. Playgrounds is for them a place to encounter risk and to overcome fear. I hope people will take away from this experience that there is an incredible range of what's possible on school grounds, that students and teachers and community members can engage uh, as part of the stewards of their schoolyard, that they can embed learning in the playground and, and diversify play and work on ecology. Each country that has been represented here and has been talking about what they're doing has brought something really different and it's, what it's done is built an amazing picture, a mosaic of an incredible movement. It is a movement of educators and environmentalists and designers trying to give children opportunities to learn and play and grow outdoors. I really hope this will be a, a big important issue for politicians around the globe. Together, in between the countries, have some kind of international um, networking and much more effective networking than we already have. So this conference I think is a very very important maybe a starting point for something like that. For all of us the road ahead is bigger than the road behind. We're not just dreaming a dream anymore, we're, we're realizing a dream right now. It's a train that's left the station and it's, and it's picking up speed.